Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof. Omar, and today we're going to discuss Putnam 2005 number B6, which is one of my favorite Putnam problems. The problem states for a permutation pi in Sn, let sigma of pi be 1 if pi is even, and negative 1 if pi is odd. And then let's let nu of pi be the number of fixed points in pi. Prove that the sum over all pi in Sn of sigma of pi over v of pi, or sorry, nu of pi plus 1, is negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n over n plus 1. All right, so the first observation I want to notice, notice about this is that we're summing over pi in Sn of sigma of pi times some quantity. Now, this looks reminiscent of a permutation definition for the determinant of a matrix. So the determinant of any matrix in general is the sum over all permutations in Sn of sigma of pi, where sigma is this sigma we have here, times a1 pi 1, a2 pi 2, times a n pi n. So this is a product of n entries of the matrix A, where the specific entries that you pick are governed by pi. Okay, so it'd be nice if we can represent this in terms of this sum. But that would mean that the quantity 1 over nu of pi plus 1, where the product was the product of a bunch of things, it doesn't look like it's the product of a bunch of things the way it's written right now. However, we can change this slightly by recognizing that 1 over something plus 1 looks like an integral. In fact, this is the sum pi in Sn, sigma of pi, times the integral from 0 to 1 of x nu of pi dx. When we integrate this, we get x to the nu of pi plus 1 times this quantity right here. And because we're evaluating from 0 to 1, we're left with 1 um, multiplied by this quantity. Okay, now the thing with this thing is we can switch the integral and the sum. Integral integration is additive, so this is the sum over pi in Sn of sigma of pi times x to the nu of pi dx. So we're interested in integrating this quantity right over here with respect to x. All right, so maybe there's a way to find a matrix A where the product of the entries is this x variable to the number of fixed points. Well, we can do that if we have an x every time we have a fixed point. So if pi of i was i, we'd have a i i being x, and otherwise we'd have a 1 to make this product equal to exactly x to the uh, number of fixed points. So we can do that then by introducing a matrix A. I'll write it down here. whose entries along the diagonal are all x's with 1's everywhere else. If we do that, then for any fixed pi, this expression will see a x every time pi of i is i and a 1 everywhere else, so we'll get x to the number of fixed points. So this integral that we're interested in, then, is the integral from 0 to 1 of the determinant of this matrix A, dx. Okay, pretty cool. So now we're left with figuring out what this determinant is. Now, lucky for us, we actually have some help from a previous video on this channel, the video being the matrix determinant lemma. And that video gives us a hint about how to compute this by peeling off a rank 1 matrix. So what we can do is rewrite this matrix by peeling off the all 1's matrix, which I can write here as u, v, transpose, where u and v are both the all 1's vector. Okay, I'm going to call this matrix here M. Now, m is almost always invertible. The only time it's not invertible is when x is 1. So I'm going to not, I'm going to think still of this as being a variable x and look at 
this determinant for various values of x. So if I pick a value of x for just not one, I'll be able to compute this determinant as follows. The determinant of a is the determinant of m plus uv transpose, which by the matrix determinant lemma is the determinant of m times one plus v transpose m inverse u. Now we know the determinant of m is, the determinant of m is the product of these diagonal entries, which is x minus one to the n. One plus v transpose m inverse u. m inverse is the matrix that has one over all these values in its diagonal. Um, so we know the contents of m inverse. Now, when we multiply by u on the right and v transpose on the left, we're gonna be take this matrix and multiply it by this vector. Its entries are all the inverse of this matrix in this vector. The entries are all gonna be one over x minus ones. And then we'll multiply on the left by a row vector consisting of all ones. So that's gonna add up all those entries. So we'll get one plus the sum of the entries of the diagonal matrix with the reciprocals of these things here. So we'll get n over x minus one. So we can simplify to x minus one to the n minus one times x minus one plus n. So this equality holds provided that m is invertible. So it holds for all values of x that are not equal to one. Right, but these two things are polynomials and we're saying that for all values of x besides x equals one, they have all those values as roots. So the two polynomials with infinitely many roots in common, they have to be the same polynomial. So the determinant of A is this quantity in general. And so we can replace this integral here by the integral of this expression we have downstairs, x plus n minus one dx. This is not necessarily a, a manageable integral the way it's written, but we can rewrite it by substituting y equals x minus one to get the integral from negative one to zero of y to the n minus one times y plus n dy. And now if we distribute this, we'll get the sum of two monomials in y, which we can integrate pretty readily. And if you do that, you do end up with exactly this quantity right over here. Cool, so I think the moral of the story with this particular problem is, when you see something that might look familiar, like the determinant expansion using permutations, try to set up your problem in a way that'll allow you to use it. Right? And we're able to do that together with the matrix determinant lemma to figure out what the answer to this is to this problem.